Uh, for onto iontophoresis, you're going to be looking for the Dupel unit, which is kept in the cupboard in the exam room. Uh, you'll also want to get the electrodes from this box. We happen to have on hand right now um, just the standard size. Um, this is what they look like. We will go ahead and peel one open. set those out. We'll also need the apophoresis unit, two lead cords, syringe, and the medication, which in this case will be dexamethasone sodium phosphate. We've marked it though with water because we use that in lab. The first thing we do is verify absence of contraindications for this modality. We inquire about any previous treatments. Um, that have been done. Um, today we're going to do a treatment on the patella tendon. So we'll use an alcohol swab to clean the area. Those are usually found in the box that the electrodes come in. All right, then we will fill the electrodes. So we have two electrodes. Uh, the one with the cotton pad on it is the active, and this will be the dispersive. The active is much smaller. Um, this is our surface area compared to the dispersive surface area right here. So we want to know the fill volume or how much we should put, how much medication we can put on the electrode. So on the packaging, the fill volume, um, it says it's 2.5 milliliters. You might also find it on the actual electrode, 2.5. So they are not all 2.5, so you need to make sure that you check the packaging. So then we take our medication with the syringe and um, we draw out the medication as needed, 2.5, so the top stopper line, the top black, should line up at about 2.5. Then that medication is dispersed on the active. I don't have any, obviously, right now. We recap it. All right. Then the active electrode is placed on the treatment site. Patella tendon in this instance. The dispersive is then placed in an area about four to six inches away. And we should alcohol swab that too. Here, it doesn't matter which one goes to control. And you open this up, and the power switch um, is turned on, making sure that the intensity is down at zero. So the electrode leads um, are placed dependent upon the medication that we have in the active electrode. So if we have a negatively charged medication, which we do today, then the negative, uh, which is right here, clip uh, is placed on that active electrode. And then the positive one is placed on the other electrode. Make sure that those get on right. If you turn them upside down, they won't stay on. So you have to have them clipped on the right side so that they stay. All right. You can treat two people. We're obviously treating one, so I'm just going to take that second lead out. Um, up here at the top is a toggle switch. So S1 refers to settings for lead one, and that's what we're doing today. Okay, so we have it on S1. Our dosage will be 40 milliamps um, per minute. If we needed to change that, or if it wasn't correct, then we could come down here to dosage and push that down to change that number or increase it for higher. Usually our treatments will be 40 milliamps per minute, although some will recommend 80, but for our lab purposes we'll be doing 40. So we'll set that at 40. Okay. Then we're going to flip the toggle switch to P, 
which is like a preset, and we increase the intensity until the athlete says it's uncomfortable. So now because we have a dry electrode, I'm not going to increase it any more than that. Um, but you'll see the total amount is placed right there. When we got to the um, highest intensity, then we flip the toggle switch to R for run. This will go ahead and um, accumulate milliamps per minute and up to 40. And when it reaches 40, it'll automatically shut off. And it sounds like that when it's done. So we just come in and we turn it off. Go ahead and take the electrodes off. Uh, these are one-time use only electrodes. So all of this is then thrown into the garbage when we're treating an actual patient. We'll inspect the area at the completion of treatment, um, document how it was tolerated and the parameters, and then clean up the treatment area.